Let me teach you how to brew with the osmotic flow technique, getting brews looking like this. The osmotic flow is a brewing technique used with the Hario V60 pour over device that is meant for dark roast coffees. It's a meticulous technique that requires specific equipment to achieve the proper brewing results. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to brew with the osmotic flow technique and the Hario V60. Start off by measuring out your grinds. We'll be using a 1 to 13 brewing ratio, which is pretty low, so 20 grams of coffee, which then equals 260 grams of water. It's important to get the right grind size too, so we'll be grinding at a slightly coarser setting, around 900 to 1300 microns, which is around this size. We will now prepare the coffee filter, coffee brewer, and also the cup that you'll be using. Put the filter in, make sure it's nicely placed, and preheat the filter, brewer, and cup. Make sure to toss out the water before you start brewing. Pour in the grinds, shake it out, make the bed even, and then let's start the pour. You want a slow and controlled pour. So in the beginning, we pour around three times the coffee amount, so 60 grams of water for the bloom. After slowly pouring the bloom amount, we wait around 10 seconds, and then we begin the second pour segment, where we pour around one third of the total liquid, which is around 120 grams of water, down the center of the brew keeping it as still as possible. Wait 5 seconds after you've poured in that water and then pour the third segment, which is a continuous pour with the remaining liquid in a circular motion, like so. You want to slowly keep on increasing the size of the circle of the center area until it's around 1 inch in diameter. Keep on pouring consistently at the same height as slow as you can in the circular motion where the crust and the bubbles meet. After you've poured all of your liquid, let the brewer drain for around 5 seconds and then remove the brewer before all of the liquid drains from the Hario V60. Give your coffee a stir and enjoy! Low, slow, and controlled pour. This is the name of the game with the osmotic flow. You need a gooseneck kettle, and also you need steady hands. With steady hands, you also need a good pouring technique. This is my normal pouring technique, but for the osmotic flow, I actually tilt the gooseneck kettle to the side to get even lower and closer to the grinds. Try aiming for a pour that is less than a centimeter away from the coffee grinds. So you need two other things to achieve this. You need to brew with a big dose of coffee, at least 20 grams or more per batch, and you need to use a small Hario V60 version 1. Now this very specific technique requires dark roast beans. And this is because the CO2 that is built up in the dark roasts allows it to create the big dome shape that is required for this osmotic flow brewing technique. And darker roasts love cooler brewing temperatures, so aim for around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. If any one of these key concepts are off, that can lead to a bad cup of coffee with the osmotic flow. The brewing technique is not as forgiving as other Hario V60 brewing techniques, so keep that in mind. There are a couple things that could happen. Here is the mini troubleshooting section. The coffee bed keeps overflowing. This means that the flow you are pouring in is more than the flow going out of the brewer. To fix this, pour slower. If you are already pouring as slow as you can, it might be of interest to look into a flow restrictor for your kettle, which makes it so that the flow that comes out of the kettle is even slower. Another option is to get a filter with a quicker flow rate so that the liquid leaves the brewer quicker. Coffee isn't degassing and creating the dome shape. The beans you're using are either too old or not roasted dark enough. 
Sadly enough, there is nothing you can do with your current batch of beans to fix this. But for your next batch of beans that you buy, make sure that they're a dark roast bean and they're freshly roasted. As I was doing research and learning about the osmotic flow technique, I consistently saw the osmotic flow technique being butchered in some way or form when I saw a western coffee channel or guide try to showcase it. Either a lighter roast was being used, the pour was high and turbulent, the coffee bed looked mostly flat at the end, or the integrity of the coffee bed was broken. Only through a subscriber's help, thanks David, sharing some additional insight on the osmotic flow and linking me some videos of himself and another Japanese YouTuber using this brewing technique, did I manage to fill in the blanks and understand the osmotic flow process. So due to the lack of information on the osmotic flow, here is an extensive FAQ on the common questions one might have. Does it really work or is it just a pretty brewing technique? There are a lot of doubters out there that have tried the osmotic flow technique a handful of times and being unsuccessful when doing it, and then just scoff it off. Now with that said, let me tell you with the right tools, form, and quality dark roast beans, the osmotic flow technique creates a balanced and delicious cup of coffee at the lower brewing ratios that is not possible with any other pour over technique. What is osmotic pressure? This is the science that the name of the brewing technique stems from. Osmotic pressure is when two liquids with different concentrations are side by side creating a semi-permeable membrane that restricts what moves between the two liquids. In the third pour of the osmotic flow technique, the outer area of the coffee bed has a higher concentration, while the center water that is being poured by your kettle creates a column of liquid that has a lower concentration. As the high concentration liquid interacts with the low concentration liquid, molecules that are solvent, fats, acids, and sugars, can move through the semi-permeable membrane while bigger particles like plant matter cannot move through it. The key aspect here is that not all particles move through the semi-permeable membrane. Fats, acids, and sugar that have been broken down become solvent and can pass through. But bigger pieces like plant fiber, also known as coffee fines, cannot move through this semi-permeable membrane. What if you just use the same recipe with a normal brewing technique? I brewed two cups of coffee, one where I knew I got a delicious cup of coffee with the osmotic flow technique, and one where I used my normal routine that I usually use for a lighter roast, but with the lower brewing ratio and water temperature. The cup with the osmotic flow was balanced, smooth, viscous, thick, and juicy. The cup from the normal technique was astringent, overextracted, and just harsh and dry which wasn't that great. So think of it like this. Each brewing technique has its time and place. The osmotic flow technique is a low extraction technique compared to other pour over techniques, which makes it great for darker roasts. Can I ever use the osmotic flow with lighter roasts? This is something that I'm really curious about. And initially I thought, ah oh, no, you kind of need that CO2 buildup to create that nice dome and everything. And I don't see it being possible with lighter roasts because of that. However, what if you use a light roast coffee that is freshly roasted with a lot of CO2 with the osmotic flow technique? This is something that I'm going to test out shortly. And if I've already tested it out, you should check it out right over here. I've only been exposed to specialty coffee through light roast coffees, and learning about the osmotic flow technique made me realize how skewed the perspective is in the Western world. I did a survey on my channel regarding the osmotic flow technique, and around 68% of people have neither tried it or heard of the osmotic flow technique. We are currently head over heels enamored with maximizing acidity and fruitiness in light roast coffees. How about we appreciate and give the same amount of love and exploration towards the dark roast side of coffee? 
So if you have any questions about the osmotic flow technique that is not being answered in this video, then make sure to post those down below. If you want to see me do some brews with the osmotic flow technique, check out this live stream archive over here and scroll to the videos that say osmotic flow in the title. I'll see you there.